if you get the Baron, or if they don't get the Baron, rather, it's fine. Well, that's a huge kick out as they try to get the coordination rule of survives for so long, but not long enough. Canyon secures it in the end. Life as well. He's burning down the black forward from Khan is now BDD looking for the execution, but he's not going to find it. He goes golden, but that just buys some time. The two man now nah, and someone here have had enough of this game. What's up, everyone? I'm Captain Flowers, and I want to welcome you back to the Out Play by Play. Last episode, we broke down Super Carry Doin B's clinical performance that gave FPX the edge over Suning. This time around, we're headed over to the LCK for a matchup between a surging Dom Juan Kia and a free falling Gen G as they battle it out in the most epic of matches. Let's take a deep dive into the action and see how DK's big brain macro play ended in a 48 minute catastrophe for Gen G. To kick things off, Dom Juan dominated the early game with a leashless canyon pathing down bot for a tower dive, putting ruler and life on the back foot, then following up with the infernal drake just shortly after. Minutes later, Gen G responds with a kill of their own, as Rascal was doing Viego things for the solo kill on Takan, while his team secures the ocean drake. But up to this point, Dom Juan are still very much in the driver's seat and controlling the entire map, with Gen G reacting at every turn. What's important to note here is the terror and threat that LeBlanc and Lee Sin pose as the game drags on. Despite Gen G having agency in all of their lanes except mid, the combo of mobility, kill threat, and damage between Canyon and Showmaker will prove to be a problem in the later stages. Come the mid-game, Dom Juan continued their momentum, chipping away at the map bit by bit. After Gen G secured the Mountain Drake, it was Dom Juan's relentless pressure to dictate and control the pace of the game that shined. With an angry Shelly charging down the bot lane, they found a pick on Declid and secured both Tier 2 and 3 turrets, as well as the inhibitor for a 6,000 gold lead. A lead that didn't exactly hold for long. After some sloppy play around Baron from Dom Juan, Gen G found their window of opportunity in a team fight, securing a triple kill onto Rascal, who accounted for every single one of his team's kills. But Showmaker, who had just been quietly going along with his business up until now, decided he wanted to have some fun too. After spotting a juicy ruler in the mid lane, the superstar instantly deletes the Gen G carry using a combo of distortion to close the distance, then double Qs and a flash forward into ethereal chains and electrocute to get on the board. 30 minutes in, Dom Juan have destroyed 7 turrets to just the 2 from Gen G, restoring their gold lead to just under 6,000. But once again, it would be short lived. With both Dragon and Baron in play, both teams swap objectives, and after Gen G secured the Drake, it was yet another botched play from Dom Juan, who are really just making their own lives difficult at this point. After Dom Juan secure Baron once again, it's Gen G who come out on top of the team fight as they make it a 4 for 2, picking off Canyon, Khan, Barrel, and then Ghost, who actually trades a kill of his own in an impressive 2v1. And for Dom Juan, things only got worse as Gen G really began to close the gap. With Mountain Soul around the corner, both teams began to set up around the Dragon Pit. And right off the bat, it all looks good for Dom Juan, with Khan finding a three-man Meganar into the wall. But with his team too far away, it all came crumbling down, as Gen G turns the tide to make it a two-for-one and go on to secure the Mountain Soul. As the game went on, both teams played on a knife's edge, with Dom Juan catching three members of Gen G out to secure yet another turret and inhibitor, as well as Baron to put the pressure on. But 41 minutes in, with Elder Drake spawning, it's Showmaker who gets caught with his pants down and is deleted by Ruler, who flashes forward with the piercing arrow, giving Gen G the advantage to take Elder. However, pay attention to the decision making from Dom Juan. After realizing that they can't contest the objective without Showmaker, they make a call for a back door, with Super Minions pushing down the mid lane. Watch as Ghost and Khan split off into mid, while Kanan and Barrel stick around to stall and delay. Gen G actually spot this, and Rascal teleports back into the base for a defense, but is crippled against a full build Ash and beefy Gnar acting as the meat shield. As Gen G continue to chunk down the Elder Drake, Dom Juan are in a race against the clock, with Canyon and Barrel working to cancel as many recalls as possible, while Ghost and Khan rip through the enemy base. What happens here really is the downfall of Gen G's base. Take a look at BDD, who attempts to teleport back, 
but into a low HP turret that's about to come crashing down. Because the turret is destroyed, his TP is cancelled, allowing Barrel to move forward and stall for even longer. Because of this, Ghost and Khan are able to destroy both Nexus turrets and nearly end the game, needing just a few more autos, but are ultimately stopped in their tracks with reinforcements finally arriving. And so, with Gen G's base in shambles and an open Nexus available to Damwon, they begin to set up for one of the most beautiful of plays to finally put the nail in the coffin. 45 minutes in, with Baron respawning, Damwon are in a position of strength, but know that if they lose Baron, the game could go either way. Take a look at the map. Khan and Showmaker are both split pushing bot. Meanwhile, Canyon, Ghost, and Barrel are all moving towards that next crucial objective. Now, look at Gen G's positioning. Because they have an open base, four members are grouped up mid, ready to contest the Baron. But Rascal is stuck in the base playing goalie to prevent any chance of a backdoor with Khan constantly shoving in the bottom lane wave. But what happens next is one of the most big brain macro plays you'll ever see. As Khan and Showmaker begin shoving in the lane, watch as they both pop Sweeper to scan the area for any wards, then just barely sneak into the brush without any members of Gen.G realizing. Now, take a look at Gen.G's vision around the Baron pit. With just a far sight trinket in the pit, they can't see a single thing, and Damwon have already started chunking down the Baron. As Clid walks up, he places a control ward into the pit and now realizes what's going on prompting Rascal to rotate over. At the same time though, watch Showmaker and Khan, who have now made their positions known and are threatening a back door, forcing Gen G to react and retreat to defend. What's amazing here is, in the midst of this back and forth, Damwon are actually able to aggro the Baron the entire time as they play this game of chicken between Baron and the back door. As it continues, take a look at Canyon and Ghost, who press forward and away from the Baron to signal they called it off. Gen G took the bait, thinking that Dom Juan really did call this one off, but Barrel stuck around the whole time. Then, as Gen G move away from the pit, Dom Juan re engage onto Baron, and once again, Gen G are forced to contest, but now it's too late. Watch Canyon, who ward hops over the wall to kick Clit away and prevent the smite fight. Then, uses Sonic Wave to jump back into the pit himself and secure the objective. Barrel dies in the process, but with Ghost and Kanan escaping, this was a win for the side of Damwon. Meanwhile, Showmaker and Khan, who had been threatening a back door, were actually able to bait Rascal and BDD back for a base defense, then into a game of cat and mouse that ended in Showmaker, well, doing some Showmaker things. All they need to do, and the heist will be successful. The chains connect as Rascal is taken down by Showmaker. It's a thousand gold, but who cares about the gold? With that pick, Genji had lost their most valuable player on the team and a primary source of damage for what will feel like the next century. And just like that, Damwon are able to reset with four players alive before strutting down mid with a Baron empowered minion wave to end the game. As Damwon approached the base, take a look at Canyon, who lands Sonic Wave onto Clid for the engage, then flashes behind Ruler for the most disgusting kick. Ruler actually flashes away and is able to evade the oncoming Ash Arrow, but walks right back into the claws of Canyon, who says not today. With both Rascal and Ruler now dead, Gen G are at the mercy of a surging Damwon who are out for blood. From here, it really is just a walk in the park, as Canyon, Khan, and Showmaker make quick work of life who flashes away for a brief moment before getting deleted. Then, Clid and BDD, who are just running into a dead end at this point, meet their deaths as well after a flurry of Zonias and GAs get popped. Rascal, who finally respawns, actually dives in to greet the Dom Juan cavalry with a valiant effort to defend but meets only his own death as well, with Dom Juan sending him back to the Shadow Realm and Gen G from 1st to 5th place for an end to a truly chaotic game. I'm Captain Flowers, and that is it for this week's episode of the Outplay by Play. Let me know what you think. Is Dom Juan poised for another world's title? And can Gen G climb out of their slump in time? Be sure to follow at LOL Esports on Twitter for everything related to League of Legends Esports, and I'll see you here next time.